West Asia has been the talking point this last week, but in the last week, the world's most populated country, China, and the world's fourth most populated country, Indonesia, gathered naval troops in the South China Sea. Talk about all the world war rhetoric. Let's play you an audio clip. This clip is from the 24th of December 2019. China's Coast Guard vessel intruded into Indonesian territory near the, the, the disputed South China Sea. An Indonesian Coast Guard is informing a Chinese Coast Guard that they have intruded. Listen to this. China Coast Guard, China Coast Guard, 5302. This is Indonesian Coast Guard calling you over. Yes, sir. As information, sir, you are in Indonesian waters. You are on the position 05 degree. 27 minute 367 second north 109 degree 29 minute 023 second east sir china has an indisputable sovereignty over the island in south china sea under adjacent waters and enjoys sovereign rights and the jurisdiction in the relevant waters as well as the seabed and subsoil. I order you, sir, to leave this territory. I order you to leave this territory. Indonesia immediately warned China. Here is a map of the region to help you better understand. Indonesia said that China trespassed into its exclusive economic zone near the Natuna Islands. Now here's the thing, South China Sea is an important trade and strategic route. It is believed to contain large quantities of oil and natural gas. China claims most of South China Sea, but Brunei, Malaysia, Vietnam, the Philippines and Taiwan also have laid claims to the South China Sea. First, China dismissed Indonesia's concerns. Listen to this again. China has historical rights in South China Sea. Chinese fishermen have engaged in normal fishing activities in waters related to the Spratly Islands. So now China is talking about the Spratly Islands. Indonesia's warning was not about the Spratly Islands, it was about the Natuna Islands. Look at the map again. But Indonesia did not let China have its way. It increased patrols around the Natuna Islands. China's ambassador to Jakarta was summoned. China did not expect this turn of events. Immediately, China started speaking about, quote-unquote, strategic friendship with Indonesia. China and Indonesia are comprehensive strategic friends. Friendly cooperation is the big picture and the main trend. Divergence is only a part of it, and it is like a branch of a river. So why did China change its stance? Here's the answer. Indonesia's preparation for a possible conflict was very strong. And I'm using these words carefully. Four F-16 fighters to the Natuna, six warships. Indonesia also mobilized its fishermen in the islands. China realized that Indonesia was ready to fight for its sovereignty. Indonesia's president, Joko Widodo, said, and I'm quoting, there is no negotiation when it comes to sovereignty. China had to retreat. Beijing started communicating with Indonesia through diplomatic channels. Today, Indonesia's president, Joko Widodo, visited the Natuna Islands and Indonesia's military confirmed that Chinese vessels have indeed left the disputed waters. China has not claimed the Natuna Islands, but in the name of self-proclaimed fishing rights, China intruded. And such intrusions, let me tell you, from China are very common in the South China Sea. Four years ago, two Chinese Coast Guard vessels penetrated deep into Indonesia's naval boundaries that was also near the Natuna Islands. It led to a rift between the two countries and since then, Indonesia has improved its satellite tracking systems. It is now openly challenging China's Nine Dash Line in the South China Sea. This is an important development in the region, the first real challenge for China in the South China Sea. It's also a lesson for other nations. The best way to deal with a bully is to call them out.